you're having conversations and um, around the transition, bring your insurance broker and your insurance company into the discussion as soon as possible. Business of Architecture, Episode 290. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today, I welcome Kevin Collins back to the show. Kevin Collins is the underwriting manager for the Professional Liability Program at Victor O. Schinner and Company, one of the largest providers of professional liability insurance for architects and engineers. Today, we discuss three things to consider from an insurance perspective when a firm is going through an ownership transition. So at this day and age, with a lot of the baby booners getting to the point where they're thinking about transitioning out of the firm, selling or growing internal leaders within the firm, something that they often overlook is this idea of the insurance obligations that they need to think about in any sort of transition situation. So if this is you, hopefully you'll find this conversation valuable. If you haven't already, get free instant access to the four-part architecture firm profit map video by going to freearchitectgift.com. Enter your best email address on that page and you'll get instant access. And with that, let's get on with today's show. Hello, Kevin. And welcome back to the Business of Architecture. Thanks. So I recently attended a session at the AI conference that was about ownership transition. And one of the considerations that was brought up was this idea of insurance. And I know this is the first time I'd ever really considered the insurance implications, but obviously there's a lot there that needs to be unpacked if there's some sort of transition going on. And so you and I discussed before this episode and you basically brought up three basic points that firm owners should be considering when they're looking at transition. Can you walk me through those? Sure. So at a high level, those three things are, one is, is making a determination of, of how that ownership transition will take place because it can happen in many different formats and different environments and, and nuances. Um, the, the second piece is really the more specific around how do we overlay the insurance capabilities or solutions uh, based upon that driver. And then the last piece would be we recognize that not um, not everybody is an owner. Sometimes you're the employee or the individual being asked to be brought into the new partnership or, or taking ownership of the, of the company too. So the last piece we want to talk about is if the ownership transition is more of an internal transition um, and you're the architect that's being asked to evaluate or to take a different role within that company, what are the insurance implications and, and things that you should be thinking about in that environment? So if you want, let's, let's start with number one. So, yeah, let's do it. so the, the, most, the most important thing really is to, to recognize that the time for ownership transition is not 30 days before you want to execute on the transition. Uh, firms that do this effectively, it is an ongoing process that starts several years or more from the actual um, you know, ex- execution of that. That being said, there's a hundred different ways to do that effectively, um, depending upon the needs of the firm and, and how they operate. Uh, as we mentioned, it, it could be just an internal transfer. It could be a decision to, to formally move, change name and, and ownership and sell to a limited number of individuals or an outside company or be acquired or merge. Um, and all of those have different legal aspects um, financial, you know, pieces, et cetera. And I think the important part from the insurance standpoint is regardless of how you want to transition your firm and complete your retirement or uh, take the firm to the next generation, there's an insurance solution for almost everything. So, so although insurance should be a, a consideration in that process, uh, insurance is not the driver of that decision. So you should be utilizing you know, your, your team of advisors, whether that's the attorney, the insurance broker, partners, um, finance, uh, tax, et cetera, um, those are probably where, you know, the more significant implications to your success is, is going to be. But from an insurance standpoint, I, I like to use the what have you done, what are you doing, and what are you going to do approach to the business, which means uh, regardless of how you would like to to transition, whether it's a, an acquisition, again, a merger, um, something where there's another company involved in the process or the, the, the corporate entity that you're operating in today is going to cease 
in some form or, or element. Uh, the idea of liability um, under the professional liability insurance is going to remain with you regardless of whether or not you're in practice or not. Uh, there are a lot of states, well, every state has a what's called a statute of repose and limitation. And the concept is basically determining what's the length of time that an architect or engineer or any other professional can be sued for an allegation of, of negligence. So there are some states that are Less than 10 years, most states tend to hover around a 10-year requirement, and there's some states where um, the courts or legislature haven't determined yet what that time frame is. What would be important to the architectural firm is just that uh, it's an extended period of time and one that they need to address. So to break it down, in any of that evaluation, the architect should decide, what do I want to do with the projects that have already been completed? Do I want to have some time frame of coverage in case a claim comes up to report it? Or do I want that coverage um, picked up by the firm that's acquiring me? How do I want to solve for that issue? Uh, the second is to recognize that anytime you transition, chances are you've got projects that are in process. So if you've started a project but it hasn't been completed, how are you going to transition that piece? Are you going to assign it to the new firm, um, uh, hire, you know, have the owner hire another architectural firm to complete the project, et cetera? And then the last piece is, what do you want to do? Um, and what is the future exposure that you want to, to deal with? So from one element, it may be just a simple retirement, that there is no ongoing practice and there will be no ongoing services provided, or in the case of, a, of an acquisition or a merger, it may be as simple as a change in the name, where they're just going to change the corporate name um, to provide those services. Um, from, an in, from an insurance standpoint, there's really two tools or two pieces. One is, if it's a name change, then you want to make sure that if you're going to contract for services under any name, that that name is listed on the professional liability policy as a covered insured. Um, because obviously they could be subject to claims from a third party since they're signing contracts and, and practicing services. It may be as simple as that. And I've had several situations where um, a firm is changing names, they're bringing on additional partners. And so Collins, Collins, and Collins is now becoming Collins Cubed or Collins to the fourth. Um, it's a new name, just needs to be added to the policy, and oftentimes you can just continue on. Um, but if the practice is going to stop, then we, there's a concept in the insurance industry called an extended reporting period. Um, and that would be the, the part of how do you deal with uh, the projects that have been completed or the services that you've done up in time, up in, to the point that you've you know, completed your operation. And in simple terms, that endorsement provides uh, an extension of time for an architect to uh, report a claim to their insurance company to the extent that they're sued or somebody makes an allegation of negligence against them for, for, for a project or services they provided prior to the close of their business. So, for instance, if uh, I close my business on July 1st of this year, um, I can buy an endorsement that would extend the period of time. Sometimes it's one year, three, five, or more. Um, that uh, firms could buy coverage for and say in September of this year, an owner makes a claim against me for a project that I provided services for in 2016. The purchase of that coverage allows me to file the claim against the insurance company and allow them to handle the, um, the litigation on my behalf, um, et cetera. So it, it, it allows that additional time frame to allow for issues that may come up from my prior practice, you know, going forward. So the takeaway here is really insurance, there's, all, there's an insurance solution for every scenario. So as they're considering the, the process by which they want to transition ownership and how they're going to approach it, as soon as you know you want to, um, to go a route or is there evaluating it, they, wanna, they should contact their insurance professional, the insurance broker, contact their insurance carrier, and tell them about what they're trying to do or how they're trying to do it. And that, that allows us to get insurance out of the way and give you options for successful transfer and allow you the chance to, to focus on the business to do what's right for the firm. The 
if I may, the, the last piece, and, and oftentimes in talking to architects, I talk to a lot of folks that, you know, are in their, you know, 30s, 40s, they're the project manager, they're controlling projects, and the owner's looking to transition or the, the partnership's looking to transition, and they come and knock on the door about, you know, getting ownership in the company or taking on a, a, a broader role. And, you know, one is that that's a great thing, showing um, the fact that they feel, you know, uh, comfortable in your services and direction and leadership. To, they want you to step up to the to the plate and, and take that. And again, there's there's other legal, you know, financial evaluations that you'll want to talk to to experts about. But from an insurance standpoint, you know, the the recognition is that the the coverage for you doesn't change whether you're an employee or a partner or an owner of the firm. Um, the, the policy attaches for any, any employee, whether it's the owner, partner, director, stockholder um, in, the, in the firm for the, the services that they're providing. And the corporation is there to, to protect that individual in the, in the environment. Where we, where we see from an insurance standpoint, the biggest piece is more around the, making sure that the name is attached to the policy or evaluating the structure of the insurance. So oftentimes with ownership transition, that's an opportunity to look at the structure of the policy. You know, what limits of liability that they're purchasing, maybe uh, specific coverages or areas of practice that they're going to expand into that may need to be addressed. Um, It's a good time just time to uh, to evaluate, you know, where you're going to be. But again, from an insurance standpoint, those tend to be very not simplistic, but but fairly easy to, to work through and, and options are available that, that can address those solutions. Excellent. So what I'm hearing from you here, Kevin, is that if a firm is planning any tr- sort of uh, ownership transition, including someone retiring out of the firm, maybe a takeover, a merger, or selling the firm, that the insurance provider, probably the broker, would need to be consulted as soon as possible. Is that right? Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And time and time again, we often see that the, the insurance broker is not the last person, but one of the last people to be, to be brought into the loop. So if, if, if you're engaging your corporate counsel or outside counsel or tax advisors or other thing in an evaluation, your next call should be to your insurance broker. Even if you don't have a, a clear picture of what you want to do, um, it, it helps to know kind of where the firm's heading so that we can prepare you know, options that, that will be effective uh, once they get to the point of, of execution. I have seen situations over the years where um, we're brought in at the 11th hour a few days prior to closing, and the way that they've structured the ownership or dealt with it, they haven't, they haven't dealt with, uh, you know, what are we going to do with the stuff that's completed? What are we going to do with the ongoing work? And what do we want to do for the future? They had not thought completely about that and, you know, the, the potential solutions that were there led to delay on closing on their side because of the additional time to solve for the insurance process. So again, if you're, if you're having conversations in, um, around the transition, bring your insurance broker and your insurance company into the discussion as soon as possible. Excellent. Well, hopefully that one tip will save our listeners a lot of anguish potentially in the future. Absolutely. Kevin, just remind us, how, how can people go get some of the resources and guides that Schooner has available? Yeah, especially for the ownership transition piece, you can find us on the web at www.schoenerer.com. It's S-C-H-I-N-N-E-R-E-R. But on these types of issues, it's, they often tend to be very specific and, and nuanced. Um, and you want to talk to somebody. So they can always feel free to, to give me a call. Um, my, my direct line is area code 301-951-5412, uh, kevin.j.collins at share.com is my email, and I'll be happy to talk to them more about that and, and see what we can do to, to help out. But oftentimes, a lot of these conversations are, are very specific to the, to the needs of the firm, and we're happy to to talk and, and ask some questions so that they can get uh, the right decision as quickly as possible. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for being on with us today. Thanks for that information about where people can go to find more about you and the company and the resources you have available. And thanks for enlightening us on some of the insurance considerations for ownership from transition. Thanks very much. And that is a wrap. As a podcast listener, I'd like to invite you to two free online educational seminars for firm owners. The first teaches you how to structure your firm to avoid the overwhelm and fires that plague so many firm owners. If you're ready to move from overwhelmed operator to excited owner, visit businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar to access this free online training. The second seminar you can access shows you how to attract your ideal clients to your firm consistently day in and day out. Go to architectwebinar.com to access this training. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.